This is a really easy way to get a voice agent set up on your computer for either really low uh, API cost or no API cost. I'll show you how to set this up completely on your own. So we wanna use LiveKit. Why do we wanna use LiveKit? Because LiveKit is completely open source so we can self host LiveKit uh, or we can just for example purposes like I'll do today, use their cloud uh, API. And so LiveKit handles basically the, the streaming of the voice in and the streaming of the voice out and the server that does that in a really low latency and smooth way. In fact, OpenAI's built their advanced voice mode on top of LiveKit so you know that in production it works really well. Now taking a look here, the first thing we have to do is get the server side set up. So we're over at their agents GitHub repo and that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna actually grab the agents repo here. We're gonna go to our uh, code folder We'll open it in terminal and then we will git clone the agents directory. So from there, we're gonna CD uh, into the agents folder and we're gonna take a look at the examples. So in the examples, which you've also just cloned, you can see here that we have text to speech, speech, we have speech to text. We're gonna be taking a look at the voice pipeline agent. And so this is where you basically already have the server side code necessary to use their um, API, so the, the actual live kit cloud. So this isn't self-hosting, but once you set this up, you'll see how self-hosting could be relatively straightforward. So if you don't want to use rag to chat with your data, simple rag or a llama index rag, let's just actually go with a minimal assistant. And we are going to be adding our own LLM, either Olama or whatever LLM that you choose that does follow the open AI um, structure or we're going to and then the other thing too is we're going to make sure that we're choosing something that can do function calling so you can call tools and actually have an agent so looking at this closer the minimal assistant doesn't have a function pre-built whereas the function calling weather does now it's preset on LLM uh, being open AI but I'm going to show you how to change that so let's go with this one so we've already cloned the repo inside examples is where we'll need to go and then voice pipeline agent and this is where we want to live so we'll cd into this specific folder as well and now use your um, setup of choice whether you use conda whether you use venv whatever you choose to use uh, i'll make another video on this but i use uv so i'm going to go uv venv to create a basically a virtual environment. And then I don't actually need to activate it, but this is typically how you'd activate your Venv. And so from here, now we need to make sure that we're going to uh, pip install everything inside of our environment. So I'm gonna just go um, uv pip install dash r requirements dot txt. And then this is going to go ahead and install all the packages. So if you have any hangups here, um, a couple things to note, if you're on Windows, you're going to need the um, Microsoft C++ build tools pre-installed and if it's not installed you'll get a link to actually go and download that so it sh shouldn't be too much trouble I haven't tested this on Linux or Mac I believe and don't see why I wouldn't work on Linux based on these packages but as you can see here we had no issues your install might look a little bit different if you're not using UV but we're good to go so if we go back a folder you can see here there's a dot env dot example so we're actually just going to copy that we're going to go back into the voice pipeline agent and then we're going to paste it and we need to have this file here and edit it with our variables to make sure that these scripts here will work so i've i've pasted the env file and so let's open this up in cursor or vs code get our environment variable set and we'll rename it to just dot env instead of dot example so next you're gonna to go to livekit.io. You can sign up with Google, and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm actually gonna create a new project specifically for this. And you're gonna do the same. Or just if there's already a default, you're gonna use that. I'll call this one YouTube. Then you're gonna to go to your settings and you're gonna to go to keys and you're gonna to need to create a new key and I'll call this YouTube. And of course, remove it by the time this video is posted so this won't work. You're gonna have a WebSocket URL, an API key and a secret key. Now save these somewhere safe because we're gonna need them. Uh, you could just put them right into your .env file and forget about them, but you may need them later. So, you know, just keep note because you won't be able to see these again. 
Cool, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and actually paste these where they belong in the ENV. So you've got your URL, and your URL is going to be your WebSocket URL, which you just saw there. We're going to grab our um, API key next, and that's going to go right here. And then lastly, we're going to punch in the secret. Next, you're going to need, if you want to use OpenAI, you can. Uh, you, you'll type in OpenAI API key, like so. And then for whatever reason, I do not know why, um, but we have a fake API key that's getting auto-completed by autocomplete, which is AI coding tool. So, you know, you do something like that. And then um, for ours, we're going to actually end up using Grok here. But for Olama, um, basically, you're going to be able to put your, uh, your, you could just put OpenAI API key, and then you could just put null, or you could put nothing in here. So believe it or not, most new models uh, that actually have an API set up, they typically are able to be compatible with the OpenAI library that already exists in Python or in TypeScript. And so uh, in this example, you can see that in order to actually just hot swap Grok in versus using OpenAI as the LLM, we can change the base URL. So we would just put base URL into our .env and we would change it to this value. And then our API key would be would stay OpenAI underscore API underscore key. And we would put in our, our Grok API key and everything else stays the same. And now all of a sudden we're using the, the Grok model. And then the other thing to note is that in our code, we would wanna make sure to go in and when we're selecting a model, it does specifically say the, the Grok model that you're using, because if there's a mismatch there, then it's not going to work. So we don't actually need to use um, the OpenAI uh, format because LiveKit has already created compatibility specifically for a few other uh, OpenAI format um, LLM. So we have Grok, we have XAI, Perplexity, stuff like that is already pre-set up here. So in our case, uh, we, we can take the easy route here and we can actually just integrate Grok natively, uh, which is great. But if not, and if you want to use Olama, for example, uh, you can actually see that in this case, it's already here too. But let's say, for example, you wanted to use a different local LLM source. Well, all good. You would just follow uh, what I mentioned before with how you would convert the OpenAI specifically uh, to change the base URL. So I've actually changed the .env name there, and I'm going to go ahead and change the LLM now in this code to use Grok. And again, if you were using something that wasn't supported, you'd keep it on OpenAI. If you were changing it to Olama or to do it local, then of course you would go ahead and change this to Olama. So I'm gonna see here where it says OpenAI and I can just go right here to uh, LLM equals and we'll go to, we'll type in Grok. I'll double check the docs and make sure that it's as simple as changing it like that, but it should be and we're good to go. Good thing I double checked the docs because it's actually this. So we'll change that now. Okay, so we're all set up to run. Now, how you would actually change the, um, the functions. So instead of calling the weather, you might want a function that does something else. Well, this is the full code right here. So this makes the uh, this callable basically within LiveKit. And then this is the actual async um, def here. So this is get weather. So this is basically its command that it can run. And so if we take a look at the code here, it's pretty simple. So this is the description of what this does. And then we can see here, this is um, actually being sent to the AI. So the AI will understand that this is called when the user acts, asks about the weather, and then it's gonna, what it's gonna do. And so then here we have the message. So this is sort of your, your immediate message that gets sent when the action gets called. So this would be sort of your filler message because it's a voice pipeline that we're using. You might want this to say like, okay, let me check on that for you. And so you can customize that whatever you'd like. And then of course we have um, the speech that's going to uh, say that. And then we have here the, um, the chat and the assistant role, right? So you can have filler messages. You can, you basically you can customize all this and you can look at the docs, but we've got here now where the actual function call is happening um, in terms of an API call, it's right here. And so this you can change. Now you could take this whole thing and you could change it. You could keep the above and just copy this and have AI build you a new function if you know an API that you wanna call. Make sure of course you do put your API key in your .env if you need it. Um, uh, the alternative there is that you can actually just go ahead and have AI replace the whole thing and you tell it like, hey, please, you know, build me a new function or, you know, just write your own functions. Um, 
but here uh, I can show you in another video how to build uh, great tools for AI assistants and agents. And that'll be another video because building great tools, um, you know, you're, you're going to want a lot more complexity than a prompt like this or, you know, prompts like this. And we can talk about that in another video. But in any case, I'll keep this standard just for now to show you how to get this up and working because we still need to actually run the front end. But our back end is good to go. So let's get that started. So now that we've got our back end good to go, env saved and the file save with changes, we're going to need to run it. So I'm going to go uv run. Now you'd probably just do Python. You know, that's different. But I'll go uv run and I'll go function calling weather. Dot pi. Now I don't think it's going to work the first time because I probably need to install .env Python package unless it's pre-installed already on my UV. Um, let's see here. So I'm actually going to do this again and then I'm going to type in um, the args which will be start and we'll see here. So actually I guess I already have it. You might get a, a notice that you don't have the .env uh, package so it'll just be pip install .env dash Python. This is actually running now, so we're good to start the front end. So let's get it going. So we're on the official LiveKit examples uh, repo here. And what we're gonna wanna do is go to the voice assistant front end. And now this is going to be git cloned. And I promise you this setup is far, far, far easier. So we're gonna go ahead and git clone just like before. And then we're gonna CD into that folder. Same thing as before, I've just opened up the voice assistant front end. And so now we're going to click on the ENV example. We'll rename it to just .env. Uh, in this case, because we're gonna run a dev environment, you're gonna need to rename it or copy as well, .env.local. So instead of just .env for this, you're gonna wanna do .local because that's the default when a Next.js application runs in developer mode, which is what we're gonna do as we're running this on our computer. So change all these values and then you'll be good to go here. One small thing before we continue is that in the LLM, if you change to another LLM like I have here, you'll want to make sure that you specify the exact model right here. Otherwise, it's going to use a default. And if you're not using OpenAI, it probably isn't going to choose the correct default. So make sure you specify right here. And you can do this for all of these here if you do know a default model and you change that. Cool. So we're ready to launch our front end. Uh, I recommend using pnpm instead of just npm. So go ahead and actually install pnpm. It's pretty straightforward. If you actually go to the website, I think right here has the docs, but basically uh, there should be a Windows installation setup, which just use PowerShell, copy and paste this into PowerShell, and you're good to go. I believe you might need to already have Node installed on your computer, which if you don't, just go ahead and Google Node and then install Node.js console, type in pnpm i for install, and we'll get this going. Looks like everything installed fine, so moment of truth, we'll go pnpm and we'll go dev, and we'll see if this will load. Looks like it is starting, it's ready. We'll click on the link, and now we should be running the front end connected to our back end, we hope. Now it's working. Um, okay, can you check the weather in Vancouver, Canada? It seems like there was an error retrieving the weather information for Vancouver, Canada. Could you please double check the okay, location can you tell and tell me um, how your day is going? I'm sorry, but I'm unable to check the weather for Vancouver, Canada right now. Oh, don't check it the seems weather. like just tell me how you're doing. I'm doing well, thanks. How can I assist you further today? Uh, can you tell me about the Great Depression? The Great Depression was a severe economic downturn that lasted from 1929 to the late 1930s. I like tell people, hey, you got to subscribe. All right, let me do that. Hey, folks, don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials and information. Thanks for your support. All right, word up. You're welcome.